So in this episode, we're going to talk about the Denver Nuggets if they were to make the NBA Finals in 2024. Who would the best matchups be? How would those matchups go? And what could be some of the things that we would hope to see in those matchups? I'm going to rank my top three matchups for the Denver Nuggets in the NBA Finals. So, y'all, at number three, I think the matchup that we would be looking forward to out of all of them would be the Philadelphia 76ers. Here's why. It's Philly. It's Philly. Obviously, there's been so much chaos and discord, and there's been a lot of calamity between the two fan bases. Joel Embiid and the Shams article has some stuff to say about Joker and expectations and why does he experience pressure. And then now you have going on four years of an MVP conversation of who's the best center in the league, who's the best player. Joel Embiid, 40, 13, and 6 this month in December. And then now, to close the year, obviously, Joker going on this crazy run, averaging 26, 12, and 9.3 on the year. And there's always been this discourse around these two players. And I think, from an NBA Finals standpoint, you would get a debate between two of the best bigs uh, that have ever played in the regular season context. You would get Jamal Murray versus Tyrese Maxey. So you would get the Kentucky duo kind of shoot off in a playoff setting. And then Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon versus Batum, Kelly Oubre. And then you would have Melton versus KCP. I mean, there would just be a lot that would be happening. Tobias Harris, Aaron Gordon. And then on top of that, you got Nick Nurse, who has had some very good playoff runs on his own had won a championship, obviously, with the Toronto Raptors in 2019. And then he's also just a great coach who's good at adjusting and he makes good in-game adjustments makes series adjustments and now he has a really good personnel around him build a really strong hub around Embiid this would be a fun matchup uh just because Michael Malone Nick Nurse Embiid Jokic Murray Maxi, and then how would KCP AG Michael Porter Jr. how would they be able to score and defend Tobias Melton Oubre this would be a lot of fun and this would be a matchup I think that would kind of help to quell a lot of the narratives, depending on how Jokic and Embiid play. And presumably, if Embiid was able to make an NBA Finals, that means he was able to stay healthy through a Finals run. He had improved playmaking. He had improved shot making in the Finals. And if you were to come to the Finals averaging, you know, 30, 10, 4, and less than three turnovers a game on good efficiency, then, you know, Jokic obviously can have to come into the Finals doing what he does. Let's say he's at 30, 13, and 10 again going into the NBA Finals like he was this last year, which is insane to think about. If he was doing that, and then you had these two trying to defend each other, Embiid, great drop defender, rim protector, and then Jokic, a great defender in space, great pick-and-roll defender, great deflector, and great bodier, you then have to figure out, well, how are we going to slant our defensive coverages around these players, and how do we take advantage of the fact that there are weaknesses that you can attack? This would be a really fun series just because I think it would take a lot for the 76ers, obviously, to get there let alone the Nuggets, but for the 76ers in particular, because they haven't been to that stage or, you know, obviously to the conference final. So there will be three for me. I do think the Nuggets would probably win that uh, decisively. I would say that probably might be a 4-1 series um, just because I think the execution for the Nuggets and everything that they would be able to throw at you at all times. And obviously having Peyton, Julian Strother, Reggie Jackson, and then Christian Brown on the bench. DJ would play in that series, I imagine. Paul Reed versus DJ or Paul Reed versus Zeke Naji. Uh, that would be a really good series. Uh, from a stylistic standpoint, but I think just overall the top end talent plus the continuity plus the high level play, Nuggets probably beat that four one. Number two, I'm gonna say the Milwaukee Bucks. There's a lot here. Giannis and Jokic have been considered to be the two best players of their generation uh, since they came into their apex, and then now on top of that, Dame Lillard, famous for his battle versus the Denver Nuggets in the regular season and playoffs would be able to square off against Jamal Murray for the first time since 2019 in a playoff setting. And that would be a matchup where you would get really high level shot production. Now, again, for them to make it that far, that means their defense must have really been able to surround Damian really well. His shot making has also been there. So if Dame is there, you know, he's six foot one, six foot and a half. That means he's healthy. That means he's been shooting well offensively. The Nuggets would really have to work to cover up that end and make sure that he's not absolutely getting any looks that he wants. They would be playing at the level, Giannis rolling to the rim, Giannis playmaking off that little short roll, and then Brooke Lopez's defense. And that means also, too, they would have more than likely 
either made a trade at the deadline or offensively, they've just been that good where it didn't matter the fact that they had Malik Beasley and Pat Coddington and Dame Lillard are spearheading their POA defense. On Andre Jackson came along. Bochamp has come along as well. Uh, but I think that'd be really fun series. Jokic and Giannis are the two giants of their era. And I, for me, both of these players are my top 20 players all time already. And this would be kind of the opportunity for one to get the championship, their second championship off of the other. Both of them multi-time MVPs. One of them will be multi-time champions and presumably multi-time finals MVPs as well. And that would really start to create some distance between the two in terms of all-time ranking. So I think that the Bucks would be one of the best. Adrian Griffin also means he would have had to, have to step up his coaching job as well. And Adrian uh, would presumably be in a situation where he's been able to make a real ascend to figure out how to work this lineup, how to make their lineup variations work really well, and then how to make sure they're handing the tools to Giannis and Dame offensively as well. So really exciting series. That's another one I think the Nuggets would win 4-1, 4-2. Um, I would say 4-2 in that series just because I think Giannis now is score a lot. But, yo, uh, the Nuggets attack teams like teams aren't used to. They don't have – if everybody's healthy on the court, you're dealing with Jamal, KCP, Porter, Aaron Gordon, Jokic, and then plus the four that bring off the bench or three that bring off the bench. Offensively, man, they would just, they're just a different deal. And bringing Brooke and Giannis away from the paint – switching Giannis into a pick and roll to get him with Brooke and Giannis coming off that pick and roll to get them away from the rim. High level drop shot, shot, shot making from, uh, from Jamal Murray. Plus the defensive portion of this is KCP, MPJ and age year, all positive wing defenders. And then having Joker who's very stout in the playoff setting defensively. And then bringing Peyton Watson, Christian Brown, uh, and then Reggie Jackson off the bench as well. Maybe Julian, maybe Z, maybe DJ. I think they would just kind of overwhelm them. And there really wouldn't be an answer to what Joker and Jamal are doing because they would just make it a, a point to be going after Damian Lillard and Malik and uh, Malik Beasley as much as possible. And then I think doing their best to try to contain Giannis uh, from scoring outside of the paint. Now, Giannis would still have a fairly good series just because he's going to be scoring at the rim at such a high level because he's you know might be the legitimately best rim pressure wing player ever. But at the same time, you know, if they can limit the, his impactfulness there because of the size they have, and then on the other end, they're kind of scoring, just presumably at will, uh, that would still be a really good series, but a tough series. And then number one, uh, I was tempted to put the Miami Heat on this list, but I think I'm I'm just going to go with a new team just because they already played last year. But obviously, I think Spo and them can easily be in there this year. I think they're that good. The Boston Celtics. The Boston Celtics, they're going to have Drew Holiday, Derek White, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Al Horford, and Christoph Porzingis, maybe the strongest top six in the league. Joe Mazzula would presumably have made improvements leading into the series. The Celtics mean their three-point shot is falling. Their defense has been on a uh, singular move together. They got plenty of POA defenders. That would be a really, really, really tough series that could easily go seven. Um, if not, the Nuggets get that in six or the Celtics get it in six. That's how impressive that could be. The Celtics are the best three-point shooting team in basketball. They also shoot the most three-pointers in basketball. But having Jokic versus KP and Al Horford, that would be a nightmare for them. And then having Jamal Murray uh, versus Drew Holiday and Derek White, that would make Jamal Murray's life tougher. But And then obviously the off-ball shooting of KCP and MPJ would be very important. And then depending on how they want to slot AG, Tatum versus AG, whoever, um, those would be some really good matchups. I think that would be a seven-game series, if not Nuggets and six. And I think the execution of the Nuggets down the stretch of that series would be really good and really important as well. Uh, but let me know in the comment section, what do you think? What would be the three best matchups for the Denver Nuggets in a playoff setting if you had to pick? Let me know what you think in the comment section. See you all soon.